All right, can you see my screen? Yes, yes sir. All right. Um, all right, so um, as I already told you, uh, the So uh, as I already told you, the uh, lecture that we about to have, uh, uh, the five and the uh, the fifth and the sixth, it's all about uh, modeling of rigid body motions. So it's a very general uh, approach. How can you model a motion of rigid bodies that may be connected in the series or in the parallel uh, between each other? And how can we model the motion? So in those two lectures, we will cover just kinematics. And <clears throat> next uh, two lectures will be all about dynamics. <clears throat> uh, and we are going to use all this stuff uh, uh, for the fourth practice task. Uh, so we will gonna have some practice. All right, so, um, uh, so let us start. Uh, here we cover spatial kinematics. So before, let's just have a small recap. So before we just had uh, like four lectures, the two of them will be like an introductory lectures and the third and fourth lectures, those was, uh, were all about bone graphs. And how can we uh, model um, and how to model physical systems and how can we do simulations such as not just create an equations but how can we create uh, a script a, a software such as um, all our system that you know, basically just a, a connection of different breaks um, how can we create out of this breaks uh, one huge system and then to use it to, to, for simulation to study behavior and performance of physical systems so today we go into even into details how can we model not just uh, ordinary uh, motion not just planar motion or 1d problem but how can we tackle spatial kinematics spatial motion Uh, so uh, there was uh, uh, like uh, the main idea of the first lecture was to understand what is the difference between modeling and simulation, and uh, I I hope that you do remember that the modeling is the act of building a model, and you can consider here that modeling is the deriving an equation of motion. It's actually something that we're going to do uh, right now. Um, for, uh, these lectures, uh, those lectures and the lecture that we're going to have next. But then we use it for simulation. We want to, do, to use um, those equations to come up with the control techniques such as then we can uh, apply it to our simulation model and then to use it to uh, study behavior and performance of actual or theoretical system. In our case, it will be a spatial uh, robotic arm <clears throat> with three links. But as I already told you, the theory that we're going to study now is very general and you can apply it for any kind of uh, um, physical structures, uh, any kind of mechanism. We will cover here open kinematics, but you also can use it for the closed kinematics. Uh, yes, I will show you uh, how can it, you tackle rigid uh, bodies, but also the same uh, theory can be used for the elastic um, uh, models, but it's just a little bit more complex and all operated and we will not cover in these lectures. All right, so um, uh, let's have a small recap of the third and fourth lectures about the, um, what is the difference between the block diagram and bone graph modeling. So basically, as if you do remember, block diagram is all about that you derive an equation of motion and then you come up with a graphical representation. But bone graph is completely different. So there is some rules. How can you create uh, 
a graphical bond graph diagram just out of inspection of his real system and then you can uh, derive an analytical math model if you do need it but if you do simulation you can just skip it because the uh, software is able to do this automatically without uh, your help <coughs> so um, in our second practice task we uh, modeled a planner uh, planner robot a planner uh, robot with the uh, open kinematics and we know now how can we use uh, a basic trigonometry to solve for example a direct kinematic task, tasks but also we considered inverse kinematics how can we solve them just using uh, ordinary basic trigonometry we can solve where is the position of end effector, what is the x and y, and maybe uh, angle phi of orientation. So we all we can tackle it. So it's very basic equation. Here uh, we can take a time derivative uh, of this stuff, and we will have will have velocities. So there is nothing uh, complex here, and I uh, I hope that it's pretty obvious for you. Uh, and uh, what what can we do with the spatial case? So the spatial is it's much actually is much much complex and is much much elaborated. But how can we tackle it? And here we can need to consider what should you do with the spatial motion. So it's it's pretty much more complex. Now let us consider why. So here we can see different different configurations. Uh, with the different topologies um, can I disable it? Um, so here you can see a uh, uh, system point of plane so here you can see a small point and this one is able to uh, move along x-axis and y-axis so you have like uh, two degrees of freedom, right? Uh, and you have two parameters, uh, two numbers, x and y. So you have the same mm, amount of numbers as degrees of freedom. Pretty much uh, very easy. And in this case, it's like the same uh, system that we, uh, well, we can consider like the same system as we had with the 2R robot that we, we, we have a robot with a two degrees of freedom uh, uh, you can come up with the, the same number of equations for the x for the y and for the orientation phi uh, uh, such as the amount of numbers so here you have you use three parameters and you have three degrees of freedom so they are equal to each other and if it's equal it's called uh, implicit representation and you can take a time derivative such as uh, uh, your velocity will be just a time derivative uh, but sometimes it's not very good way to go so here the second example with the spherical pendulum uh, uh, you like you also have a surface so it's a spherical surface you also need only two parameters actually to uh, describe position of point on the surface you need to, uh, to have a latitude a longitude only two parameters but in uh, in this case uh, you need uh, uh, you need to, to have like two parameters but in this case you have singular singularities what I mean. So if you uh, you have a motion, for example, here in the middle of the sphere, everything is fine. But if you go here to the pole, it actually what does it mean? Is that actually this line that you ha you can see here is actually is not a line. It is actually a dot. And derivative of that of this dot, uh, derivative of this uh, you know, latitude will be infinite. 
So if you do a, a time derivative of uh, latitude or longitude, you will get the, sim the situation when you get infinite velocity. And if you do some kind of control which is which, uh, had such issues, you can uh, come up with a situation when your robot behaves uh, uh, unpredictable. And uh, you can uh, get the situation when you uh, when you uh, your controller uh, tries to get infinite velocity, and you can uh, get some nonsense, or you even can get dangerous uh, situation when your robot just can um, do some uh, very dangerous motion that can hurt anyone. All right, and because of this problem because of this issue with singularity for the such configuration as sphere here we to avoid singular, singularity we use uh, greater number of parameters than degrees of freedom so we ex in, instead of using latitude and longitude we can come up with just three parameters as you all know x y and z so the same point here uh, can be uh, considered as excuse me as uh, z y and x and in this case you will not get any um, problems with the singularities and um, since all of them uh, changed linearly and there's no problem with that uh, so it's like you have you have uh, uh, two, two degrees of freedom here but you use three numbers to describe it so it's like you use more parameters than actually you need and it's called implicit representation but in this case so you have an advantage here since you do not have any singularity but the disadvantage is one of the disadvantages is that the time derivative of position will not be uh, velocity anymore so it's something uh, here is something different uh, and for now, I will, uh, I will try to explain during the uh, lecture, but here, uh, just try to understand the intuition, uh, the concept uh, that it's really needed, uh, this kind of tool. Uh, and here, once again, the explicit uh, representation, in Russian it means ясное представление, explicit pre uh, representation, when you use and parameters to describe n dimensional space it's like you have two dimensional uh, space as you have uh, here uh, you have a point on a plane it has two degrees of freedom you have two parameters like in third prime uh, in third example you have uh, three degrees of freedom like planar joint uh, the motion along x-axis uh, the motion along y-axis and also you have rotation and you have uh, three equations, three parameters, three degrees of freedom. So they are uh, they match. Uh, but uh, sometimes it, it is not very way to go. And we use implicit representation when you use more parameters, like n parameters, to describe n dimensional space. And you use more numbers than actually you need. And it's actually the way that we're going to use. We are going to use n. Uh, we can, we can going to use uh, uh, transformation uh, uh, homogeneous transformation matrix H uh, that consists of a matrix of rotation and position vector, and it is four by four matrix. So this one has 16 numbers to describe uh, motion in 3d space and as you probably know uh, a random object has uh, six 
uh, degrees of freedom, but in order to uh, parameterize it, we're going to use 16 uh, numbers. Yes, uh, three of them are numbers, and one of them is just one, so basically it, you know, we will going to use uh, 12 original unique parameters to describe motion in uh, Euclidean space that actually has six degrees of freedom. So this is the uh, idea. And this example I already explained you. I'm, uh, do you have any question here? So let me know if you do have, do, do not be shy to stop me. If you do have question, let me know. I will try to maybe uh, explain you more uh, explicitly. And the disadvantage. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. If the situation is implicit, mm -hmm. uh, can we get the accurate number of the parameters we are going to describe? Can you repeat that? Uh, okay, now if we have uh, n parameters and we want to describe the n uh, dimensional and now the situation is implicit, can we get the accurate uh, number of the uh, n uh, dimensional space? Accurate, uh, accurate what? I didn't get it. Number. Number? Yes. <clears throat> I didn't really get the uh, equ your, equ your question. Here the idea is that uh, we consider uh, a complex motion that has many degrees of freedom and uh, actually this concept is quite general it can be used not just only to describe uh, motion in three, including 3D space that has um, like 6 degrees of freedom but also the same concept uh, can be used for another uh, dimensional spaces for I don't know for some um, uh, some other concept that is not related to this uh, for describe, uh, describing uh, of motion and it's also a case it's like it's an, a concept of uh, differential geometry and we will consider uh, this sphere sphere actually as an example of manifold as the um, do you familiar with the concept of manifold so it's something uh, like uh, the smooth uh, that uh, represent uh, configuration space and you can take a time derivative of this space or you can uh, take a derivative and it gives the whole dis uh, dis uh, description of the system that you you want to tackle so here basically the same concept lies here but why I did I gi uh, gi give you this example of the spherical pendulum is something that uh, we can uh, draw so we can uh, draw um, uh, uh, as a surface a two-dimensional surface embedded in three-dimensional space but we cannot make a picture of for example a ten-dimensional or uh, six-dimensional space embedded into 16 uh, dimensional space as we are going to do this uh, in our course uh, by the way you can write down your question in the chat uh, I can take a look at later um, all right um, Once again, disadvantage is that we are going to use more numbers of freedom, and here we have some issues such as time derivative is not is not a, a velocity anymore. But advantages is that you can avoid singularity and get precise uh, numbers for your configurations. Um, yeah, I already told you that. Um, it's something that you can just read then uh, after uh, the lecture, such as you can go through the slides. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
I will explain you later in details. All right, so here you can see a list of reference that uh, I used in the uh, for this lecture. Uh, the first one is a book of Kevin Lynch and Frank Park, which is called Modern Robotics, and also you can see a um, uh, front cover. Uh, and it's uh, the book that is very great, and you can you know, read it from scratch to understand the whole concept from initially from the beginning. It's a very great book, such as um, uh, you do not need to read any other books to understand this concept. But it's like 1,600 no, pages in a book. Uh, the second one is a book of Rigid Murray. It's, uh, more complex and more advanced, it cover more topics than uh, the book of Kevin Lynch. If the situation is implicit and I have m parameters, uh, let's go back to okay, here. It's not. It's uh, the question is: Is it always you increase by one? Yes, no, no. Way. Here you can see that uh, uh, we are going to describe uh, motion uh, that actually has sixteen uh, numbers. So uh, if you consider an object, it has x, it has z, uh, uh, it has y, x. Uh, like linear component and rotation, so it it's like x, y, z, and the theta. I do not remember the other um, uh, numbers. Let's call just x, theta x, uh, theta y, theta z. So uh, you have like six, uh, six, uh, uh, six numbers, numbers. To describe motion. Uh, so in our case we use uh, m equals to 6 in our case here but we're going to use m that equals to 16 because we're going to use homogeneous transformation matrix to describe motion and position and configuration and state all the stuff of a uh, an object that actually has 16 degrees of freedom. So, uh, in our case, it is this one. So, we have n equals to uh, 6 and m equals to um, uh, 16. Yeah, but the concept is far more general than uh, something that we're going to consider. Uh, here in this lecture, so, so we're going to use just like a tip of iceberg for uh, for motion modeling, but actually it's the concept of math or differential geometry, and uh, this concept can be used for different kind of uh, uh, scenarios. All right. Also here you can see a uh, few video courses. The one by Kevin Lynch and Frank Park. It's not the case for now. Let's not go so in the details. Uh, here is the general is the idea is that uh, uh, it's not the same that uh, the numbers of parameters and numbers of um, degrees of freedom that we want to describe are not the same. This is the main point that we need to take in mind. So let's not go deep in the details, uh, otherwise we will not cover the material in these lectures. So here uh, the, uh, the uh, video courses are based, uh, the first video course by Ken Lynch is based on the book of Modern Robotics. Uh, 
but also there is another hook by Stefano Stromagnoli and actually my slides and uh, all the content that I'm going to uh, use is based on the material of Stefano Stromagnoli you can uh, take a look at the uh, his course uh, but uh, he has no books there is no book for the Stefano and this is why I'm giving you both uh, references all right let us start from rotation uh, rotation matrix. Uh, uh, rotation matrix is needed to uh, uh, describe orientation of a body. So let us start with uh, just a very plan, a basic planar case, and then we proceed to the spatial case. So here uh, uh, we can uh, derive something like this. So here you have uh, two bodies, pink body and uh, like yellow body. And the point P uh, is rigidly connected with the pink body. So uh, we want to express position of point P in respect of both, um, both frames, both coordinate fr uh, system. And we can write down that x1 uh, uh, x1 equal, equals to x2. So this is x1, x2 plus y1 and y2. And you can um, project everything on x1. And uh, you will get something like this. So this x2. Uh, times cosinus of angle theta uh, y1 goes to 0 because perpendicular because cosinus um, of 90 degrees equals to 0 and you will get only uh, x2 here and y uh, y2 here and the same for the y so here you have x2 and y2 and there is no x1 because the angle here is 90 degrees uh, you can uh, represent it in the matrix form you can represent it in the matrix form uh, and uh, you will get something like this as, as you can see uh, uh, at the bottom of the slide. So you have uh, x1 and y1. It is the representation of a point P orientation of uh, like a uh, body in the uh, pink frame and x2, y2 is it is the same uh, Point, the same orientation but expressed in the another frame the frame uh, the the green frame and the matrix that you have in the middle is uh, uh, is called rotation matrix R um, yes may I ask a question? sure so you said the coordinates of point P on the left side are in the red frame and P on the right side on the green frame, is that correct? Right, yeah, so here you can see like x, uh, look, um, maybe I said it wrong, so this is uh, y2, uh, x2, it is pink and x1 and uh, y1 is green the, the point here is that we have the same uh, like the same body but expressed in two different uh, frames and we uh, can express here orientation of uh, p so we do not talk about general motion we talk about orientation here uh, but we want to we we can express the same orientation like in two frames and we can go from one uh, representation to another uh, representation it's like we can think about like a point p it's just some physical point that do not have any numbers so it's a uh, uh, 
physical uh, point no numbers But then we want to uh, to use numbers such as uh, it's the way how can we understand uh, uh, everything and we can express the same in one frame, for example P2, and we can get the same in another uh, frame like P2, like P1 and P2, and in order to go from one uh, representation to another we use a rotation matrix uh, with those indices so we you can think about like you can uh, delete like this two and this two and you will left you will be le left with just one here so it's like a p1 correct so this is our equation um, uh, but it's very like uh, the janky uh, representation. Let's go uh, and derive uh, a correct uh, and full representation. But before we do this, um, those was like an intuition. But let's us uh, derive a formal form. But before we do this, we need to, to recap some math concept. Yeah, here we can see uh, the annotation that uh, I'm using through the uh, lectures. So if we tackle just physical points that are not numbers, uh, we uh, we do not use superscripts. No superscripts here. We can see that there's nothing here. Uh, but if we express uh, vectors in some frame, we put a script here on the top of a point. And uh, for example, you can uh, describe transition from uh, one frame uh, PJ into another uh, PI just using uh, rotation matrix. So let's assume that you have PJ. If you will multiply it with the uh, rotation matrix, you will get PI here. All right. It's something which is called a rotation matrix. Um, so we will continue with the um, uh, matrix uh, uh, mathematical concept that we're going to use it right now. So uh, vector space. Uh, vector space is just a bunch of elements that has two operation. You can multiply it a vector with a scale, like you can multiply it. Like if, for example, you have a vector v, you can multiply it with another uh, vector uh, with a scalar. For example, here two is a scale, and you can increase or decrease uh, the uh, vector. Or you can you can sum vectors together. Those are um, uh, properties of a vector space. Uh, another uh, another uh, concept is a free vector, and uh, uh, the free vector is something that has length and direction. And here it can be represented by an arrow in uh, Euclidean space uh, and here only length and direction matter it's not fixed you can consider like an angle of velocity uh, if you consider angle of velocity of a body it will be the same for the whole body it do not um, it does not um, depends on where do you look at this so angle velocity is the same no matter of point so linear motion is different for example we we consider one link like a link a b the angle of velocity will be the same for all of the points of this link a b but the linear motion for example b will be uh, angle velocity times length but for the for example point 
O, it will be um, like this. So it's not the same, but angle velocity is the same. So angle velocity here is uh, uh, free vector. Uh, so Euclidean space is something that it's actually a vector space, but it also has an additional operation of inner product. An inner product is when you have a vector and you can multiply it with another vector, uh, and it will look like a linear combination of two different components. And if you do have a operation of uh, inner product, you can take about uh, norm about. Um, uh, magnitude of your uh, vector you can talk about uh, orthogonality such as one vector is per perpendicular to another vector so they if uh, the inner product uh, equals to zero uh, in this case those are, are orthogonal and also you can consider an angle between uh, ang uh, vectors so if you do not have operation of inner product you actually cannot do this um, a vector product is uh, uh, actually a consequence of the in, uh, inner product and uh, uh, actually the something that I just wrote you with the angle velocity with linear velocity and with the R uh, with like rotation um, uh, this um, radius vector it is a vector product because uh, uh, later I um, wrote angle velocity like this, but actually it is a vector which is applied here. Uh, this is your radius vector and this is your uh, linear motion and since uh, angle velocity is a free vector you can you can move it right here. Alright, so uh, how can we calculate vector product? We use skew symmetric representation. So skew symmetric representation is something that if you take it in transpose, it will be equal to itself with the minus. And what uh, what does it mean? It means that the elements on the diagonal are supposed to be zero is the only way how can you do this. And if you need to take a vector product uh, you need to multiply skew symmetric representation uh, with another one and it's actually the way how can we do uh, calculate linear motion so in our example that I will show you and actually you already can download it from Yandex disk uh, in order to get a linear motion uh, V you need to take a um, skew symmetric representation of angle velocity and multiply it with the radius vector uh, because it is a vector product uh, and in order to do this in order to calculate this stuff you need to use a skew symmetric sim representation and we also use uh, another function from Kevin Lynch book uh, it, uh, it's called vec vec to uh, so three I believe something like this to take a screw symmetric representation all right something about notation so if we uh, consider real number we wrote it like this if we take uh, consider about uh, Euclidean space we use this representation for Euclidean space free vector is uh, denoted like this like a Euclidean with a uh, with a star it's the way to describe inner product the way to describe norm and orthogonality this one is orthogonality it's not translated yet excuse me uh, coordinate system I guess it's uh, the final uh, final uh, concept math concept that we need to remember um, uh, we need to refresh recap so coordinate system it's something that has origin like a position of uh, origin of, um, like a point O and it also has uh, three unit angle you uh, three unit vectors X Y and Z and if you take an inner product of any random unit vectors you will get 
zero since those need to be orthogonal and the, uh, and the direction I mean the direction of the the magnitude of this unit vector equals to one since it's a unit vector yeah here you can see that the norm of unit vector equals to one and we actually can calculate it if you we have operation of inner product and if the in, uh, inner product of two random uh, unit vectors equals to uh, zero it means that those are orthogonal it's two uh, two properties that need need to be uh, that need to be uh, hold hold it such as uh, we actually uh, we can say that actually uh, the something that we talk about is a coordinate system it's not something else all right so so we realized uh, some mathematical con concept and now we can come up with a formal description of a rotation matrix so actually in order to uh, compute um, uh, rotation matrix uh, you need to take an inner product of just two random uh, vectors here. Uh, so we do not need to do all these projections. We need just to uh, make the projection. And here, uh, if we derive all this stuff step by step. So there's a lot of stuff I do not want to um, uh, uh, to uh, deep into the details if you want it you can do this with your own pace but basically what can you see here so the p is uh, position of this point p uh, o1 is position of uh, uh, origin so p minus o1 is nothing else like this vector we, we can call it like a and uh, if we take an uh, inner product of this vector that we consider with the unit vector, for example, with the x1, so little hat means that it is a unit vector, you will get a projection x1. So we can uh, consider projection x1, projection y1, and you will get coordinates for the p, point p, uh, expressed in the uh, frame uh, 1. You can do the same uh, to express point P in the second um, frame 2. And if you do derive it, all of the stuff, you will get this nice equation for the rotation matrix. Now, uh, and we can practice a little bit. So, um, um, uh, here we have um, let's go back to the uh, uh, vectors mm, inner product where is it uh, inner product I mean where is it this one mm. yeah let us use uh, this stuff So, um, as you probably remember, um, we, uh, we found out that in order to get like x1, uh, we need to take, a, uh, so we need to uh, calculate inner product. So, 
let us consider that we can we need to take uh, inner product uh, between um, uh, v and omega and uh, it will be equal to the magnitude of one vector times magnitude of uh, second vector uh, times cosinus of angle between them right so this is our equation that we need to use right now so let's go to the uh, final final uh, stuff here so let us calculate the inner product between x1 and x2 so let us calculate so it will be magnitude of x1 times magnitude of x2 times uh, cosinus of angle between them and the angle between them is theta right uh, uh, since uh, x1 and x2 are excuse me um, are the uh, unit angles uh, unit vectors it equals to 1 and this one also equals to 1 so you get that r21 equals to cosinus theta right is it clear all right so let us can proceed next and can calculate the second uh, uh, inner product between x1 uh, and y2 so also there will be norm of the first one and norm of the second one and both of them equals to ones it's do not affect our uh, number and then we need to multiply with the cosinus uh, uh, with the angle between them so the angle between x1 and uh, y2 will be theta plus p over 2 right and this stuff equals to minus sinus theta so we need to write it here sinus theta okay let us finish with the uh, with the the rest of the terms so i'm not going to write norms because it's all the same so we need, we need to uh, write down here cosinus of angle between uh, y, y1 and x2 like this angle and it will be uh, um, p over 2 minus theta do you agree so this is p over 2 and if we need to consider this angle between x2 and between x2 and y2 it will be the great angle p over 2 minus theta and it will be equals to sinus theta it go here and the final one um, do you see my screen yeah, all right um, all right uh, and the final one is the angle between uh, y1 and y2 so this is the angle and it is actually cosinus of theta 
So we can came up with this matrix and it's exactly the same uh, that we had previously when we just use our intuition. So it's exactly the same uh, 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 I, I, I erase it. I'm sorry, let me write this again. So it was, let me rewrite re it. So uh, we wrote something like um, cosinus theta, then uh, minus sinus here, sinus here and cosinus here. So this is our uh, system. And now let's go back to the... So I will save it. Now let's go to our original one and here is, it is transposed. You can see it that uh, the something that I just derived you was uh, uh, looking like this right and it is in needed if you have a different kind of situation so here we can see that we already we we like initially new position uh, orientation uh, point P expressed in the frame 2 and we multiply it with the rotation matrix and we get P expressed in 1 and here it's like we have the same and from here we actually can see a very unique um, property that um, if you want to take an inverse it is enough to take a transpose uh, all right so um, let's have a little practice by your own So we uh, consider it a um, um, two R example, a two D R example, planar example with two degrees of uh, like a planar case with three degrees of freedom, right? Um, but now let us come up with a three D uh, case. So. If we do the all the steps to deriving one, once again, but for the special case, we come up with this structure. Uh, but now let us have a little practice. Uh, uh, I will divide you by three groups right now. So we will have like three uh, rooms and uh, let us uh, just consider several examples. So I do, I will write three of them uh, here. And uh, if you will come to the room one, you will need to do the first example. If you have the room two, you need to do the second example. And the third room, do the uh, third example. So let us consider that we have an uh, initial frame. Uh, uh, like this so it will be 
uh, z, it will be y, it will be x. Can I change? Yes, I can change color. And we have another frame here. It will be y2, it will be z2, and we have angle theta, theta, just theta, right. Uh, those are 1 and 2, 1, 1. And the uh, problem here is to derive R. How does uh, how it will look like? Just the same that I just did it uh, for you uh, for the uh, 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 case with the two D case. So uh, here we have you can see inner product, and let me uh, give you a hint that inner product between angle. Uh, between vector v and vector uh, vector omega will equal to the v norm of v times norm of omega uh, times uh, cosinus of angle between between them like this uh, so you need basically that you you need to do is just to calculate uh, um, nine, yes, nine uh, inner products to derive R. So it will be uh, a task for the first room, then I bet you already know what will be the second task. So let's assume that this is Y this is z and this is x one 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 and this is x2 it is y2 it is a task for the uh, second room and the task for the third room will be uh, to do rotation around y-axis um, so um, pom, 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 pom. it will be x it will be z right One one. It will be z two x two, and you have all of you have angles theta. So the task is to derive r how it gonna look like for the three angles. All right? Did you get the idea? Yes, sir. All right, great. So now I'm going to. Um, to make uh, three comments uh, three of them all right i will yeah i will make three of them and uh, uh, you need to do like them by all all right Before you went to your uh, session, I will uh, give you additional comments. 
let me show you, you my screen once again. Yeah, so here you can see the uh, tasks and here also you can see the uh, equation of uh, for inner product and more than that the something that is going to help you uh, are those uh, trigonometrical formulas so um, uh, I will leave this um, uh, here for a couple of minutes, uh, for one minute, I guess, and uh, your task is to derive a rotation matrix using inner product equation and those trigonometric formulas. I hope it is clear. So now you can do this, you have several minutes to do this. And uh, by the way, uh, who will be ready to show uh, the, the result will get extra point for your total score. All right, now you can do this. Sure, the diagram. Do you have questions? Is the task is clear? So here at the uh, slide you can see the uh, diagram. So your first diagram basically it is rotation around x-axis and you need to uh, calculate the inner uh, products for all of the uh, 
uh, components here. And if you will do this, you will get um, rotation matrix for the X. It's something that you can Google very fast actually and will, you will find very fast what is the rotation matrix for the X, but uh, the idea here is to derive it by your own from scratch and do not use any external uh, sources of uh, information. All right, so uh, Ivan, are you ready to give answer? Uh, all right, but uh, mm, can you uh, uh, tell us what are the angles between them? Because it's something that um, mm, uh, can be um, uh, can be found in Google very fast. Ivan, can you? Unmute your microphone and just say how did you derive it? Ivan, can you hear me? Can you unmute your mic and just explain us how did you do this? It's a bummer. All right, I will uh, I will uh, write your name as, as the first one who solved it. All right. All right, I will go to the second Zoom session uh, to the next room. All right, did you solve? Do you have an uh, an answer? All right. I have an answer. Did you solve it? I have a rotation matrix for our... Can you give us results? You can share your screen or you can uh, uh, tell us out loud or you can write in the chat so something. I saw on the paper, maybe I can see on the rotation matrix first element. You can uh, share your, your, I don't know, video, such as we can see. How does it look like? So um, you have need to have a rotation matrix around that axis. Can you show us? I can show on my camera, this is okay. Mm -hmm. Can you do this a little bit lower? Um, is it zero? So you have only three terms? Uh, yes. It's not correct. Actually, the the example that I showed you before for 2D cases also was around that axis. So basically, you will need you need to have the same components. So you have a mistake. Uh, Precious, uh, uh, are you? Uh, did you finish? Precious, I'm sorry if the pronunciation is not correct. Uh, did you finish? I cannot hear you. Uh, your mic is not working, I guess. Can you just show me what, what do you have? Yeah, it's not correct either. All right, uh, I'm, uh, I see that you have troubles. I will just repeat it uh, with uh, to everyone. 
All right, I will go to the. Uh, I will show you the what is the trick. Okay, I will go to the next room. All right, did you finish? Can you show me your result? So you need to have a rotation matrix around Y, right? Around Y, right, yes. Yeah, can you give us a result? You can write in the chat, you can show a video with, I don't know, with, with your piece of paper. Yes, I wrote it in by hand. Yeah, can you show it? Um, maybe I took a picture and sent it in the chat. Give me a minute. We waited too long, so I'm going to close the sessions, uh, the rooms. Uh, but uh, you, otherwise, uh, you can send your picture to the uh, to the chat. For everyone, for in general group, right? For everyone, yes. Okay. Yes, you can do this. Yes. This one for rotation about uh, X. Uh, X. Uh. Uh, X don't change, so uh, it will be uh, 1, mm -hmm. because the, the angle between uh, X1 and X2 is 0. Uh, X1, X2, X, X1, Y2 uh, is perpendicular, and also X1 and X2. Um, yeah, it looks correct. Yes. Okay, so uh, your name is? Abdurrahman. Uh, uh huh, alright. Thank you. I wrote your name. Alright, so um, for those who didn't really get the the idea. Uh, I will give you and I will show you once again. For some reason, uh, guys in the second room wasn't able to do the the task. Uh, so I want to show, but I don't know how to show. You do you want to scale, uh, to show your result? Yes, I can. Uh, I can show you. All right, let's do this. Uh, the first, uh, the first line is the cosine theta. Uh, can you theta share theta. your screen or your your results? What is the what was your variant? Uh, the second. The second. All right. So, can you give us the correct answer?
you can share your screen you can show your camera and show a your picture or something like this or you can write in the chat so we want to see the correct answer Any luck? Uh, it's loading. It's loading. Let me know when you will finish. Okay. I do not want to waste time, so we spend a lot of time on this stuff already. So, uh, I will continue uh, the example so basically what we needed to do here uh, look um, for the second variant second variant uh, x1 and x2 so the angle between them uh, theta so we need just put to put here cosine theta x1 and y2 so it will be cosinus of theta plus p2 x1 and uh, uh, zeta2 it is a cosinus of 90 degrees and cosinus of 90 degrees equal to what? Okay. what? Cosinus of 90 degrees, can you tell me? Uh, I'm showing sure the second one. Equals to zero. Um, the same goes for the Y1Z2. Uh, for the Z1X2, Z1Y2. And the Z1, Z2, they are aligned, so the angle equals to zero and cosinus of zero equals to what? One. Of zero equals to one. And we're left with the Y1, Y2, so here will be uh, sinus. Sinus? Cosinus theta, it's like this one, and here will will be uh, y one and x two. It will be cosinus p two minus theta, like this. So in and in the results, you will get something that look like. Um, this and you can see that the we have one for the uh, for the yes, but uh, the something that we uh, we can need to consider are signs because. Minus is uh, something that uh, changed the position, and here we can see that we considered motion in the, uh, around that axis, and we have uh, one here. So something just to uh, to check you: um, if we you consider rotation around x axis, you will have something like. this and here you have some terms and rotation around y will be also and here some terms like this 
All right. Um, Vadim, did you send it? Nope, I don't have an option. I can share my screen. All right, you can do this. Uh, right, yeah, sure. Yeah. The same stuff. All right, uh, uh, Vadim, I wrote your name. Okay. Uh, Liu, Liu, yes. uh, did you... Uh, can you I'm share sure your screen? Yes, I am showing. Is it your screen? Yes, it's my screen. Cosine theta, x theta, zero. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Can you un can you stop sharing your screen? I wrote your name, uh, Vadim. Can you show your result? All right. Yes. Yeah. It is for the uh, Y, right? Y, Y. Um, mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. So we have four results. Thank you very much. Let us proceed with the material. So we had the little practice. All right. Um, actually, uh, those rotation matrices are also a group. A group, it is a mathematical uh, stuff, some uh, mathematical concept, and it, we call something a group that have a bunch of elements and a bunch of uh, numbers or something with the uh, operation and uh, uh, it has uh, several axioms. First of all, it's closure. It means if you have um, uh, an element, if you have an operation, if you do an operation with those elements, you get another element which also um, uh, which also uh, 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 an, an element of this group. So, for example, let us consider uh, natural numbers, or uh, let us consider not, not those, but uh, okay, like naturals. Naturals, uh, the, those look like uh, one, two, three. It's like uh, like apples, right? And let us consider, for example, operation, uh, operation uh, like plus. We can take one, we can uh, do operation, uh, uh, we can uh, make a sum of uh, two elements and we will get the element of, um, we'll get another element and it also will be a natural number. So closure here, here closed. So check associativity so we can take um, something like this and we will get the same result as this also checked uh, we can take an identity uh, we cannot take an identity because there is no uh, is no um, element that if you will Add to this, we will get the and the same since uh, zero is not natural number. Zero is, uh, is something else, as I far as I believe. Uh, we can consider. Uh, uh, let's let us consider another example um, with. Uh, 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 with the, uh, integer integers with uh, with z so it will be like uh, minus uh, infinity uh, minus 2 minus 1 0 uh, 1 2 la, 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 plus infinity 
So if we take one and um, uh, take another one, another element, you will get uh, like three. It also um, uh, an integer. Uh, it holds, so assertivity also holds, an identity holds. So you can take uh, an element, you can uh, make an um, operation of uh, of adding. Uh, zero you will get the same so you have identity element and net neutral element and you can take an inverse so you can uh, do for example one uh, plus minus one and you will get uh, the identity and identity but if you do the same operation the same uh, stuff but with another operation with operation of uh, uh, operation with uh, uh, minus uh, operation with the multiplication uh, you will get uh, that uh, closure is holds check assertivity check but identity also check because um, uh, you can multiply it with the one and you will get the same so it's also checked uh, but inverse uh, if you have a, a minus two for example or we can just leave it with two you need to multiply it with something such as you can get a one you can get an identity and there is, there is no number such as you can multiply it. You need to multiply it with, actually with the 1 over 2, but it's not integer. So the integer numbers with operation of multiplication is not a group. It's just an example of something that is not a group. Uh, integers with the operation of uh, of adding of sum, summation of uh, uh, with the plus is a group All right. and it happens that uh, or, or rotation matrices uh, have no inverse for both operations. All right, yes. Uh, and it uh, it happens that uh, rotation matrices they also a group because uh, the uh, the axioms that I just mentioned mentioned closure sensitivity uh, identity and inverse those holds for the rotation matrix so you can do the same you can multiply one rotation matrix with another and you will get the third. Um, uh, orientation matrix. You can uh, take uh, uh, multiplication like associativity also holds. There is identity such as you can multiply identity uh, with the uh, rotation matrix and you will get the same uh, rotation matrix and you can take uh, uh, rotation ma matrix you can multiply it with inverse and you will get identity but it's not just a group it's special orthogonal group and special is because uh, it has it have a special uh, property such as if you take an inverse you uh, or take the transpose you will get the same result and uh, probably you do remember that it's very easy to take a transpose and it's very much complicated to take an inverse it's very easy to uh, to to prove, and you can practice um, uh, by yourself that it's actually true. And it's something that very, 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 very great about rotation matrices. And uh, because of the uh, the closure associativity and as such, um, uh, because of the closure axiom and associativity axiom, you can do a chain rule. You can multiply several rotation matrices, uh, such as you, for example, you have a robot, 
and you want to express orientation of end detector um, uh, but expressed in the, um, in the frame of your very first uh, link. You can multiply all the uh, uh, rotation matrices uh, between each other such as you can get a final rotation matrix that describe orientation of the final frame in respect to the very first one. You can do this very easy now. All right, so um, we do have a question. Yeah, we can do the pause. Uh, mm, we can take a break. Actually, we can break it right now. Uh, is it uh, time according to the schedule? Because I do actually remember. Yeah, uh, let's take a pause, uh, let's take a break uh, for 10 minutes and then we will continue with the angle velocity, all right? All right, so we have 10 minutes break. So let us consider now angle velocity. So if we have a point P, which is rigidly connected to um, uh, frame I, this one, the green one, uh, let us assume that we do have, let me just you rewrite something that you already see. So if we do have position of point P in, in frame I, we can use a, a rotation matrix to go from I to another point, uh, another uh, frame G. And we can get PJ, right? If we want to consider uh, uh, velocity, for example, linear velocity, we need to take a derivative. And this will be a derivative of a complex uh, structure. And it will be like R J I P I plus R J I P I. And since P is rigidly fixed with uh, frame I, P uh, I with that will be equal to zero since uh, the point P, the point P is rigidly fixed with I. So the distance between uh, origin of the frame and P uh, do not change. It, it, it is the same. <clears throat> and because of that, uh, the time derivative p dot will be equal to zero. So this stuff is equal to zero, and we get that p uh, j dot equal to this stuff. And if we put uh, um, instead of uh, r j e j the Uh, because once again, uh, pi also equals to uh, this sentence, this term, and we can put it right here. And what we will get? We will get that p dot j equal to this stuff. And here we have rotation matrix dot times it in inverse. If you will uh, take a look more closely, you will, you will see that it is uh, r dot r inverse. And it's 
nothing else as angle velocity. And it is skew symmetric representation of angle velocity. And here you can see that angle velocity is not just a uh, uh, time derivative of a uh, position, of uh, orientation. But no, it's not r dot. It's r dot times r uh, negative. And we do remember that uh, for rotation matrix r negative, it's also the same as r transpose. So here, uh, if we do have any, uh, any indexes as uh, now, so let us assume that r equals to r i j, then r transpose will be nothing else as r j i. And it's something that you can see here. It is angle velocity. And um, it's something which is called Lie algebra, but we are not going to go into this, those details. The point here is that angular velocity here is the um, product of an R dot with R transpose. And um, from here you have actually two variants, uh, two, uh, two options. So here, what do you have? Uh, you have uh, angular velocity of uh, body E. So it's a uh, velocity of body I uh, in frame expressed, ex expressed Mm. that that mm, uh, have emotion uh, in respect uh, like in respect of frame j so we have like a body i that rotates around uh, some another body j and this motion is expressed Exp uh, expressed in frame i <clears throat> and uh, there is a mnemonic rule such as let us let me write the same stuff here um What should you what indices you should write here? You need to write here the same index as you have right here, and it will be on the whole diagonal. Uh, on the another diagonal, you need to write down another uh, component here, it will be j. And you need to put a dot there, you have the same um, the same indices, upper indices and bottom indices, so it is right here. If you will, if you want to express the same motion of body i that rotates around uh, body j, but you want to express the same motion uh, not in y but in the j, so it will it was i, it is j. Uh, we can do the same mnemonic rule. So here we do this element, then another element, and we put a dot right here. And here we can see that you do have uh, two options. If you will multiply it, like uh, you will have a left choice, you will get a motion that uh, expressed in the frame of the object that they consider, but if you will mm, uh, um, uh, change the places of those come to ours, you will get uh, the motion which is expressed, but not in the frame of uh, body i, but in the frame of uh, body j. All right. Uh, 
Okay, let me skip this stuff because we run out of time and proceed with the general motion. So we just covered uh, rotation, matrix, orientation, uh, but also we need to cover general motion. Uh, before we considered only orientation and uh, revolution, but now we also consider uh, translation motion, general motion. Uh, so also uh, here I do have all derivation and you can proceed by this derivation with your own step, uh, with your own pace. Uh, uh, but here I would like to be very quick. So uh, generally if you want to express not just only uh, orientation but the general motion, it will look like this. We already know actually that instead of A we need to put R. So here A, B is something like mysterious that we do not know what it is, but already we know that instead of R, A, we need to put a rotation matrix. And uh, instead of B, actually we need to put some bias, some, uh, uh, some, uh, uh, some linear motion. So here it will be a vector, actually, a vector of position. And if you derive all this stuff, uh, you will come up with uh, this uh, uh, with this equation that uh, basically gives you information not only about orientation but also about linear linear displacement, a bias, linear bias. And here. It's like an uh, it's like uh, an equation. It's not a matrix, really not a matrix representation. Here we have just x, y, and z. So p r p j equals to x j, y j, and x j. But in order to use matrix representation, we need to go from uh, three components to four components. And if we will do this, we will be able to. Uh, Right, this stuff. So uh, we can express uh, position uh, of, uh, of a point in frame uh, J like it is equal to homogeneous transformation matrix transpose uh, times PI. It's like if you do have uh, uh, numbers that express uh, position of point E. Uh, point P in the frame I, then you can multiply it with the homogeneous transformation matrix to get uh, uh, position of the same point P but expressed in another frame J. Uh, and here, the everything you, that you need is trans uh, homogeneous transformation matrix, and it consists of rotation matrix that we do familiar and position vector. So here O i j is nothing else as x y j y uh, j i uh, z j i. That's it. We know what now what homogeneous transformation matrix is. And actually it's also a group so we know what the group is. It's like the same stuff with the um, uh, revolute, uh, with the rotation matrix, but now it's called special Euclidean group, not orthogonal, but Euclidean group. And uh, uh, it's also a group since uh, all those uh, properties of closure, associativity, identity in inverse elements. Uh, all of them uh, holds hold, right? Uh, and the special why? Because you also can take a time derivative of this uh, uh, um, uh, group. Uh, uh, the inverse is not a transpose anymore. It's, it's a different structure. Here you can see an equation. How can you solve an inverse? And here, actually, you can see uh, homogeneous transformation matrices for all of links if you consider planar case. 
So here you can now uh, see that it is a rotation matrix matrix around z axis, right? So this is also the same. This is the vector of position. So for the first uh, link, it's 0, 0, 0. For the second link, it's uh, L1, 0, 0. For the second one, L2, 0, 0. And it is for the third one. But expressed in the, like, not in the world frame, but in the uh, frame of the previous uh, 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 previous link. And if you do want to solve direct kinematics, you need to use the chain rule. So here, if you multiply all this uh, uh, homogeneous transformation matrix because of the closure uh, and associativity, you will get, uh, uh, you can calculate um, uh, position of some frame four. Here, actually, I do not have any four frame. Yeah. Uh, so for the picture that I have, it's supposed to be like this. Like this. And you have, here you can, uh, you have a motion, a uh, motion of three in res respect of frame O. All right, uh, so we covered for now rotation matrices, angle velocity, and homogeneous transformation matrices. And the same stuff as we did with the angle velocity and rotation matrices also holds for the homogeneous transformation matrix. So we also can do all these tricks and we will come up that there is something that equals to a homogeneous uh, matrix with a dot times uh, its inverse and its uh, equal to the something which is uh, which analogous to the angular velocities but now uh, it's not only angular velocity but also linear uh, linear velocity and it's something which is called twist and if we want to calculate uh, general velocity not just angle velocity but general velocity we need to uh, use twist uh, we need to calculate twist and the twist it is homogeneous transformation matrix with a dot times homogeneous uh, matrix inverse here is a mistake it's very great mistake yes um, and not transpose inverse let me uh, it is a mistake so it, suppose here we need to put inverse it is a mistake I will fix it and you can um, uh, consider uh, motion of point P here and if you will do this if you put your twist yeah by the way uh, here you can see a, a little tilde here it's mean that here twist uh, in matrix form and if you will derive it you will get uh, something that look like this um, and instead omega it's angle velocity also in skew symmetric form and uh, v is a linear um, linear velocity just in vector form um, but since we have a tool to go from skew symmetric representation to the just vector representation, you will have another way to uh, to express twist. And here, twist will be look like uh, a vector of uh, six entities, and three of them will be angular velocity, and three of them will be linear velocity. And this actually a way. How can we go from implicit representation when we use 16 numbers to explicit representation when we use six numbers for to express six parameters 
as you can see here, the twist has six entities. And it's something that we are very, very um, convenient to express because we can now uh, consider exponential. So I will show you in a minute what, what I mean by that. Uh, so it's something that you can do, uh, uh, for example here it's just the same equation that we had previously, here, and you can uh, uh, put instead of uh, just twist uh, this, uh, uh, like the meaning of this twist, and you will get actually this equation that basically gives us that a velocity of um, point p expressed in j actually equals to angular velocity uh, uh, then vector product radius vector pl plus initial uh, and linear velocity so it's just uh, the equation that you know it's just very basic equation and from here you can see that actually the matrix representation that we just derived makes sense and it's pretty much the same that we familiar with before. So it's like uh, uh, this equation must be familiar to you. Uh, and here you can see that the, uh, the how can we express twist in vector form. So it is um, twist in vector form, twist in the matrix form, and also here you have two options. So basically uh, you can uh, take, for example, uh, we want to express twist of uh, body i, body i that moves um, uh, around body j, and we want to express this motion in a frame j. So it will be it look like we need to take this parameter, put it here on the uh, uh, primary diagonal. Then we need to take the uh, the second uh, uh, element and put on the another diagonal. And we need to put a dot where it is the same here. So this is the motion of body i that moves around the body j and the motion expressed in the frame of body j. And also we can do uh, the same motion of body i that moves around uh, body j, but we also can express the same motion in frame i. So and it will be like we need to put this thing in the first uh, in the primary diagonal then we use the second uh, entity on the another diagonal and we put a dot with the same indices right here and here we can see that we have two choices right choice and left choice <sighs> all right so we do have we now we considered rotation matrices, uh, angular velocities, homogeneous transformation matrix, and uh, uh, twists. Okay, I will leave, uh, I will skip that, that part. Um, uh, so basically, so I will skip this part. Basically the idea is that uh, before I showed you uh, what if you have just two components, uh, e and a J, like two bodies, but also you can be very general and to express twist uh, of some random body K, uh, body K that moves uh, uh, around some um, another random body L, but all this motion expressed in another third body J. It's like uh, I can express the motion of this pencil around my table uh, and I won't, can express this motion, I don't know, in the frame of, of uh, a monitor, for example. So I, it's very universal tool that allows you 
uh, to describe motion whatever you want so you can play with different kind of structures and it's very universal tool to, to describe all kind of motions so uh, also it's something that you can uh, um, uh, consider by your own with your own pace because uh, if I am going to explain you that I will just go deep in the details but here is the idea is that uh, in order to change uh, here is an equation to change the frame in matrix form so you can can see a small tilde here but here there is no tilde it means that the twist in the vector form but also you can uh, uh, go from one uh, from one frame to another frame using a joint matrix so this matrix is called a joint and also you can be very general and here you can see that there is no tilde it means that the twist in the vector form and in order to uh, uh, go from one uh, frame into another frame you need to use an adjoint of uh, of a homogeneous transformation matrix and if you know homogeneous transformation matrix you can use a joint function in MATLAB just to go from one frame to another frame it's very convenient so here you can see a definition of a joint that I just mentioned. It is for vector form, twist for vector form. It is vector, uh, it's twist in matrix form. So you have all the tools that are needed. Another remark that I would like to make about uh, a very, uh, the great advantage uh, about the twists. Let us consider those two bodies. You have a body, pink body, with the frames uh, P1 and P2, and you have another body uh, with the frames uh, 3 and 4. And uh, uh, we know uh, that. Uh, so let me just. So here I believe that it's not very understandable, but uh, let me just rewrite this. So let us consider the motion of frame three. So we consider motion of a green body and we want to express the motion of green body uh, in respect of pink body. So we choose the first uh, the first frame and we're going to express this motion also in um, uh, frame in the frame in the first frame so it will be we do remember our mnemonic rule it will look like this right so we uh, just derived something that uh, expressed here but now let us consider not the frame 3 but the frame 4 and do the same so let us derive a motion of uh, frame 4 around frame 1 expressing the frame 1 so what will we get uh, it will look like this right uh, but we can uh, use a uh, chain rule so it will be actually one three uh, and three four right right and we can put it inside here uh, and we will get something that look like with a dot right let us let us leave something that we already had Some 
something strange is going on here. All right. Uh, all right, just let's derive this stuff. So uh, it will be uh, one over three uh, uh, with a dot three four plus um, this stuff. All right, so it's like a complex function, um, and from here we know that h. 3, 4 actually equals to 0 such since those two frames C3 and C4 uh, they belongs to the same body a rigid body and the distance between them is the same and uh, if you take a time derivative of a constant it, you will get 0, right? So here you will get something like this and then if we uh, do uh, our um, uh, chain rule we will get that we can write this stuff and here you can see that it, it, it is exactly the same that we had previously it means that the twist of frame 4 that rotates around the first axis and expressed in the fir first axis is the same as the twist of um, uh, twist 3 that rotates around uh, 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 frame 1 expressed in the same 1 so it means that uh, the twists are the same no matter what kind of frame have we chosen it means that we now we are independent on choice of a frame so we can choose whatever we want we want uh, and we get the same twist and for now we can talk about absolute motion of bodies not just any frame of a body so here we actually can say that this twist not just a uh, twist of frame 4 or twi twist of frame 3 is a twist of a body of a green body and this twist will be the same no matter of what kind of frame have we chosen this one is very unique and yeah, very great you can do this trick once again and here you can see that uh, uh, we considered here a twist of frame 3 which is uh, rotates around frame i and it is the same if we consider motion not uh, uh, in respect of frame 1 but in respect of frame 2 and frame 1 and frame 2 both of them belongs to a pink body so it's like the same trick but like reversed so uh, it, it's no matter what kind of frame we will choose for the pink body as well Pretty cool, yeah. All right. Uh, it is about the notation that uh, A uh, here is the body uh, that we consider. B it's another body that um, uh, the body A moves in res around body B, and we respect all of this in the frame I. So here you can see uh, the notation of how can we how do we use all these indices, and if there is a tilde, it means that um, the, the twist in matrix form, and if there is no tilde, it is uh, the twist in the vector form. All right, we can see the velocities, but also there is something which is called range. And the range uh, is the uh, dual dual to the twists. It's like a twist is the combination of angular and linear linear motion. Range is a combination of torques and forces. Such as if you multiply range with a twist, 
you actually will multiply all the forces and torques with angular velocity and linear velocity and here you can see that uh, you can um, uh, take an inner product between, uh, but actually in, it's not the vectors, uh, um, uh, range is a covector. You can pair covector of range with a vector of velocity, such as uh, the result will be inner, pro uh, will be linear combination of elements that f in result will give you a scalar P. And here, if you do remember the, our previous lectures, the twist T is, is a, nothing else as a flow and range will be, um, uh, will be effort. And such as you can multiply flow with effort and you, can get, you will get a scalar power P. Great, yes? And uh, uh, as great as we, with the ranges, you can uh, sum them as just as scalars. And in order to, get, to go from one frame into another frame, you also need to use a joint, but transpose and joint. And he, from here, you can see the derivation. Why do you need to use a transpose uh, uh, Jacobi? All right, uh, transpose uh, a joint. All right. Uh, the, why does uh, this theory is called screw uh, theory? But because uh, uh, the twist that that is the main idea here is nothing else as a vector, a spatial vector, such as you can uh, describe all the motion like a body in respect of this uh, vector. Uh, basically, there is Mott's theorem that states that any element of a um, uh, special Euclidean group can be described as a pure uh, rotation around the axis plus translation along the same axis. So it's like a motion of a screw. So you have a rotation motion and translation mo motion along the same uh, the same uh, axis and this axis is nothing else as a twist which is a combination of angular velocity and linear velocity that's it um, so uh, here you can see that those uh, some parameters are omega um, pitch so pitch it's like um, like in the screw you also have a pitch and you can use actually all this uh, all these uh, equations to visualize uh, a, a twist. And here we can see that we have a brick that just uh, uh, oscillates on a spring. And by this cylinder, I, I denoted a twist. So here we can see really can see this twist. All right. And the same uh, geometric interpretation can be also applied for the ranges. Also, a range can be considered uh, like an like a frame a vector. It's not a frame. It's uh, it's not a vector. It's a uh, covector. But also, you can do a geometric uh, uh, interpretation. All right. So if, uh, let us conclude this part. So if you do. Uh, have a PC, uh, something which is represented in, in a frame PCI, you can uh, multiply it on the uh, homogeneous transformation matrix to get something which is expressed in another frame PCJ. If you want to express velocity uh, originally in the frame I, but you want to get uh, the velocity in uh, frame j, you need to multiply your twist on a joint if you do use a vector representation. And if you want to do the same but uh, for the ranges, you need to go another way around. Uh, you need to multiply it on the uh, joint transpose. And in bond graphs, you, here you can just use a, a modulated transformer and the coefficient of transformation will be nothing else as a joint. All right. 
let's wait one minute. So uh, we considered rotation matrices, we considered homogeneous transformation matrices, we considered angular velocities in skew symmetric form, and we considered twists and ranges. It's something that is important to us. All right, so let us continue with the exponent coordinate representation. So uh, here you can see an ordinary differential equation, x dot equals to ax. And here you have an, uh, uh, you have, uh, um, you can solve it. And the results you can see here. So x will be equal to exponent in the power of at coefficient a times uh, time t and all of this uh, multiplied with the initial uh, configuration x uh, uh, x zero right uh, and exponent will be can be decomposed in the Taylor series you can actually do this uh, for the matrices as well and you will get something like this and here from here you can see some uh, properties and the trick is that so here you can see the stuff that the angle velocity with we just derived equals to r with a dot times r so we can rewrite it in this form and you can see that it's very uh, very much alike as a uh, differential equation and we can also uh, solve it and get that uh, rotation matrix equals to exponent in power of angular velocity great right and the same trick goes for the homogeneous transformation matrices as well so now you just spend a lot of time deriving uh, the form of rotation matrices, knowing what is the angle, what, is the, what are the uh, components, that components are the inner product between the axes, and it's pretty much was complicated, and it's much, much more complicated if you consider not just one rotation, but some complex motion, and not just one rotation, but a lot of joints, and it can be uh, tedious to derive all of this stuff. But now you can see that everything actually that you need is just to know what is your initial position and you need to know the direction of, of angular motion, right? Um, and so here we know that the rotation matrix equals to exponent. Uh, of in with the power of angle velocity and uh, the Taylor series is nothing it's not, not very convenient and uh, there is an, a, a formula which is called Rodriguez formula for rotation that basically basically give us a very uh, great tool to calculate what are the uh, revolution uh, rotation matrix so r equals to exponent in the power of angular velocity and here i is just an identity it will be just uh, 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 plus skew symmetric form of angular velocity so here something uh, times sinus of our angle plus all the storm so it's pretty much obvious so in order to calculate r actually you need just to know what is your uh, what is your angular uh, displacement so you can take it from uh, some kind of sensor right and you need to know the direction of your motion that's it and that this equation will give you the correct rotation matrix great uh, uh, we also here we can see um, uh, some uh, example of proof F how can how can you what can you do with the homogeneous transformation matrix uh, as a, 
uh, which equals to exponent in uh, power of twist so you can take your uh, you can consider it with your own pace I do not want to uh, dig into the details but actually you will get that homogeneous transformation matrix equals to exponent in the form of twist mm, uh, uh, so this is is as a twist in the matrix form and it equals to this stuff where instead of this exponent we can write uh, the uh, rotation matrix that can be calculated using Rodriguez uh, Rodriguez formula uh, this stuff uh, look like a little bit scary but actually if you will consider um, for a while it's not something very strange so this is the angle of velocity it's pretty easy to calculate uh, identity rotation matrix angle velocity linear velocity so those are components of the twist if you're able to calculate uh, rotation matrix uh, as um, uh, uh, rotation matrix, then you're able to calculate twist. So if you do not twist, you can calculate h from here. This is the formula for you. And basically, from here you can see the, that uh, uh, if you do have a kinematic pair, your twist is supposed to look like this, you know, like a unit twist for the uh, pre-rotational kinematic pair, pair, and this is for a prismatic kinematic pair, and this is general representation. Here is like a screw representation that I showed you that we can resemble it as the screw motion. So here it's like rotation and linear motion. All right, so uh, for direct kinematics, we know that we can use a chain rule. And if we put all the stuff here, so also there is a very tedious uh, derivation. So I do not want to waste a lot of my, uh, time here. You can just uh, consider it with your own pace, such as you can really understand that it actually makes sense. But if you derive it always uh, step by step, you will come up with this equation, which is called Brockett product of exponential formula. And this very great uh, equation uh, to calculate the direct kinematics and everything. Only thing that you need to know, or two things actually, is twists for all of your links and the initial configuration. That's it. You do not need anything else to solve direct kinematics. All right. Uh, now it's time to consider an example. And actually it is an example that you already can download from Yandex disk and something that I gave you as a, as a reference. So we have here a robot that consists of three links. Uh, the first link, the green one, rotates around uh, z-axis so this is z-axis the second link uh, rotates around x-axis you can see here and the third one also rotates around x-axis is it clear because now it's very important such as you do understand the structure of the robot is it clear All right, because now it's very important since we can see the now the 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 task, the fourth practice task, and uh, uh, since the first link rotates around z-axis, we put here a little uh, one. It's like x, y, z, and since our link rotates around z-axis, we put here one. Here you can see hat um, hat mm, means a unit vector so it it's mean that it's only the direction the second and the third links those uh, rotate around x-axis and this is why we put it here so if you you have 
for example, uh, uh, rotation around Y, you will have something like 0, 1, 0. Is it clear? So we just take a look at the picture. We look at uh, we look at the axis and we put a uh, one if uh, it rotates around the axis and we put zero if it do not rotate. All right. If uh, in case of a prismatic joint, uh, angular velocity e equals to just zeros since there is no rotation, right? Is it clear? All right. Now uh, we do remember. We do remember what does it mean a vector product. If you do, did not get it, you can uh, take a look at the slides. I will send it to the Yandex disk. And uh, the linear uh, motion, the translation, the prismatic motion equals to a vector product of radius vector r and angular velocity. So if we want to calculate linear motion of some link, we need to take a vector product. But how can do we calculate vector product? We take a, a skew symmetric form. So this is the skew symmetric form. So if you have some vector that look like this, this will be your, uh, your skew symmetric representation. All right. Uh, so you need to take a product uh, between a skew symmetric re representation of angular velocity and radius vector. So what does it mean radius vector? It's uh, the radius vector be uh, between a frame of your interest and the very first frame. So we consider all the motion around the, this world frame, which is in this point. So you can see this line, it means that it is there. So radius vector for the first link equals to zeros because there is no displacements in x, y and z. But for the second link, this is the second frame, we have a displacement in z, L1. And for the third, as you can see here, we have a displacement uh, in Z direction, L1, and we have a displacement in Y direction, and we put here L2 and L1. Is it clear? Good. All right, and uh, in order to get the uh, linear motion, you need to take just uh, multiplication between skew symmetric representation of angle velocity times linear uh, times radius vector and you get linear components so now we know twists and uh, as you do remember actually we don't need anything else except for initial states so th those will be the twists unit twists those are screw axes so the, it's theory called screw theory. So this, this is screw. So initial configuration. Uh, so those are for the center of masses. So this is C1, C2, C3. It is needed to calculate uh, dynamics. In order to calculate uh, in, uh, direct kinematics, you need only this stuff. So instead of rotation matrix, we put here identity because the orientation of the end effector and uh, where initial frame is the same. And everything, only thing that we need to write here is the displacement for the uh, for the end effector. So we will have L1 for the Z. We have L2 plus L3 for the Y, and we do have nothing for the X. Is it clear now? I hope it is clear. And now you just can use this bracket exponential formula to calculate direct kinematics. And all of the um, 
components you can see equations here and in order to solve this stuff you need just Rodriguez transform Rodriguez uh, formula this is quite obvious how to solve it just a linear algebra and if you will do this you will get the direct kinematics all right the final final step uh, so here we just solve uh, how can we calculate an equation uh, to get and uh, to get a formula uh, for the position for example of n the factor in respect of initial world frame or how can we get the position of center of masses but we also want to consider uh, velocities right so we can now consider differential kinematics Jacobians so um, we know this stuff that twist is a, is a product of homogeneous transformation matrix with that times uh, homogeneous transformation inverse and if we will do all this stuff here so uh, actually you can uh, get that <laughs> twist of uh, and the factor will be a sum of twist of all the components and if you do further you will get this equ this equation so the twist of n the factor will actually equal to jacobian times angular velocity so it's pretty much the same idea as we already considered uh, during our second practice task that the Jacobian, so the linear, uh, that the uh, velocity of the end factor equals to Jacobian times angular velocity. But here I didn't take any uh, time derivative. This one is called geometrical Jacobian. It's not analytical, but geometrical Jacobian. And there is a space Jacobian, there is body Jacobian we're going to use space jacobian and in order to derive space jacobian you need only to know your twists so uh, uh, here we can see the um, uh, the formula for the uh, the way how look like space jacobian and it has uh, six rows because twist has six rows, like three for angular velocity, three for linear velocity, but amount of columns will be equal to amount of your um, links. The first, uh, the first uh, uh, column equals to the uh, twist of the first link you need twist the screw but for the the following you need to change the um, uh, the the frame in which it is expressed because we we want to express it in the very first uh, frame zero and this is why we need to uh, multiply it with a joint do you remember a joint we consider it joints and we can put it here and we have nice equations just that need to be derived and here you have a brief proof and if you can see an example here you can see uh, the direct kinematics for the two R robot that we had previously in the second practice task and if we do all the stuff deriving so it's pretty obvious but it just uh, takes time to derive you can do this by your own you can come up with the twist. So here we can see the twist. All right, now let's us consider once again the example that uh, you've been provided. Uh, this is the Jacobian. We have three links, and this is why we have three columns. And the first column will be just equals to the very first uh, twist, but the second column will be equal to the twist the second twist but which is multiplied with a, a joint and the, the same story for the third 
uh, column. So if we will calculate all this stuff, we will get, we will come up with those uh, Jacobians. So here we can see the Jacobian for the first link, Jacobian for the second link, and Jacobian for the third link. Whew. So we derived all the Jacobians. That's it. Very easy. Uh, you all, only thing that you need all the the twist and the twist we just derived previously. So by just out of an inspection, we didn't solve any. Uh, we didn't take any partial derivative at all. We just considered the structure, put this those uh, one and zeros, and considered the initial position and out of this we got those Jacobian pretty pretty simple actually so it takes time to understand why it's actually true and in order to understand it, it's it's not enough even to consider the slides that uh, you've been provided in order to understand fully the concept you need to read the, the book that I uh, give you in the reference, but from here I, I believe that I, I would like you to get the intuition of this concept. So uh, we had, let's assume that we had angular velocities, we multiply it with the Jacobian, we take a twist. If we uh, have a range of external power which is applied to our robot, we can multiply it with the Jacobian transpose to, J to, to take the torque which is needed to be applied to the joints in order to, uh, to, to tackle the range. And it's something that we are going to use for the impedance control. And also if you want to model it in the bone graphs, you need to use MTF. All right, that's it with the slides. And now the final step that I would like to show you, it is the example in MATLAB. Excuse me. So uh, in the Yandex disk, you can see uh, several uh, um, several uh, uh, folders. Let me start with the first one. So I will uh, consider uh, now three examples um, because I believe that you will um, uh, you will be able to consider the rest of the examples by your own. Uh, I will just give brief comments where it is important, I believe. So here, while it is uploading, uh, you can see some script. You can uh, take your time to read all the comments. But basically, in this uh, first script, I, um, uh, I have calculated the inverse kinematics problem for the uh, 3R robot. And by the way, also here you have a link for the book of Kevin Nietzsche that you can chop, you can consider for more details. Mm -hmm. yeah. Zoom takes a lot of memory, and this is why computer are pretty slow. So we need to wait a little bit. All right, while it is uploading, I will also try to, all right. Here we can see that the robot does all the motion and in the live script you can see uh, all the parameters, uh, inverse kinematic tasks uh, and the plots 
the desired and the actual one, all the stuff, so you can uh, consider it by your own. Uh, and in order to use a PID control, you do not you don't need to consider dynamical model, but in order to uh, to uh, derive uh, a dynamical model of uh, uh, this robot and do a, a feedback linearization trick uh, that I uh, that I described the concept right here. It's all. It's pretty much the same that we had during the second practice task. In order to do this uh, feedback linearization trick, you need to derive uh, MCN components of the dynamical uh, uh, equation. And in order to do this, I have a little script here for you. With uh, with the same uh, with the same uh, example, so let me run it. So here we can see the same robot. Here we can see a, a bunch of references for the uh, video course of Stefan Ostromajoli, the Modern Robotics uh, book. A course of Russ T. Drake uh, and also uh, all the lectures in Russian. And then uh, you can see pretty much the same that I just showed you in the slides. So this is the angular velocity of the first link, angular velocity of the second link, angular velocity of the third link. And for your practice, you need just to put here your numbers. Uh, for example, if you, your first link rotates around x-axis, you need to put uh, one here instead of here. Uh, then you need to update where is the position of joints. Then uh, here you can see uh, that I'm using here a function uh, to get a skew-symmetric representation. Then I believe the, uh, the something that you need to change is the position of the center of masses. And after that, uh, you can see here uh, rotation matrix. By the way, here you can see the rotation matrix around z-axis that you just derived by your own. But here uh, I used matrix exponential Rodriguez formula to derive it. Then you can see here the homogeneous transformation matrix and here you can see an example of the one of the homogeneous transformation matrix for the third link uh, you can see a bracket a bracket uh, equation uh, exponential formula for the ki uh, direct kinematics uh, here you can see the jacobians uh, so you can now you actually can consider everything up to inertia and inertia and the matrix uh, and all the terms of dynamics will consider a uh, next lecture but uh, since it will be uh, very cl close to the all the deadlines I encourage you to take a look at the one of the videos of Stefan Ostromajoli or you can consider reading a book that I provided to you to to just to get the concept of the dynamics equation uh, but here we can see that no matter of uh, your system the script will be the same the, the only thing that you need to change is up here is you need just to change the kinematics then you just run the whole script and you get matrices m uh, c and n for your model actually you can use this same script for the second practice task to uh, to derive the dynamical model and you can check is it the same that you uh, that you got when you was deriving by your own all right and the final uh, point here is that um, so those uh, components are 
for the dynamic equation and here also you can see uh, a tau which is needed for the impedance uh, uh, impedance uh, uh, controller so here when we was talking about the uh, yeah no about the Jacobians I believe In order to get tau, you need to take a range and multiply it with the Jacobian inverse, and this is exactly what is happening right here. So my point is that we didn't consider dynamics yet, but you're already able to do the fourth practice task, because everything actually that you need is to understand kinematics, and uh, then script, I believe, will going to work for your structure and you already can do the whole um, uh, practice uh, and then uh, we will go deeper in the details next lectures and we will consider also um, dynamics and why actually the equation that i wrote in the script uh, makes sense all right uh, i hope that uh, you uh, you understand at least something uh, I, I do understand that the uh, stuff is, is uh, complex and it's very much advanced and you need to spend a lot of efforts and time to really uh, get used to this and understand it. Uh, it, took, it took for me uh, a lot of time to understand it, uh, but uh, from here I my point was to give you intuition and just show you uh, that uh, there is a way to model uh, uh, to model uh, motion of uh, objects in the Euclidean space and actually the something that I just showed you it can look like very scary and hard but if you will practice a little bit you will get that it's not it's not a big deal and this is why I gave you uh, a script with the dynamics you just need to spend a little time just to understand how does it work and then everything will be clear especially when you do your own practice task all right um, all right uh, the same concept can be easily be used not just for the open kinematic structure but for the closed kinematic chain but you need to add uh, some uh, something about Lagrangian trees so there's something to be added, but still uh, it can be used there and they use them. And it's very, actually it's very powerful tool. No matter what you're going to use it, uh, maybe for the, I don't know, for a synthesis of control as we did it in practice, but also you can use it for uh, analysis or you can do this for the uh, motion planning. So every part of robotics actually uh, needed this tool and this is why I gave it to you and it's not something that can be uh, you know uh, done such such as it will be easier for you it's something that you really need to uh, spend your efforts your time to read the book to maybe to watch the videos of Stefana because here I gave you all this concept like in two lectures but Stefana gives the whole course only about this way of modeling all right um, but still uh, it's going to pay off if you will uh, take your time and uh, spend efforts to to study this uh, method just very great thank you for your attention if you do have questions you can ask me now or just later you can write in the telegram or just let me know if you do have any questions and that's it for today thank you for your attention if you do have questions i will be here for you if you do not have you can uh, you can uh, 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 exit the meeting thank you Thank you. Thank you.
Do you have a question? Yes, I have one. Yeah, I'm listening. If I'm not mistaken, it is uh, 85 flight. Five? 85. 85. Yes, it might be my bad that I didn't ask right away. Uh, there we were deriving the linear. Uh, uh, can you just uh, wait for a minute? Is it the right one? Uh, next one. This one. Um, no. Where is the? Uh, you remember radio selector? Uh, with the radio selector. Um, yes. Yeah. We read. The, uh, the question is: um, so when we, for example, uh, F L M F two, why we? Consider uh, the left tip of the linkage, uh, but not the center one and not the right one. Right Here is the position of joints. You see that uh, the yeah. joint of the first link. Uh, you see the the arrow, and you can see the frame that the joint right here, and the the joint of the first uh, link exactly at the world frame. Uh -huh. But the joint of, for the second frame, for the second link, uh, right here. So there is a displacement which is equal to the length of the first link. And you can see that the displacement is around, is along the z-axis. And uh, this is why I put uh, L1 for the z. And the same true for the third, uh, third link. Uh, we look for the place where is our joint. Yes, now I got you. Thank you. And uh, if we need to follow the trajectory, we should consider the amplitude. And for this one, um, the risk will be different, right? Like there was, there will be um, L1 to fly. Uh, the velocity yeah. of the end effector will be Jacobian times uh, uh, vector of angular velocities or okay. linear velocities, uh, in turn, if you do have a prismatic joint, uh, joint velocities. Okay, I see. Thank you. Uh, do you have m any more questions? Uh, so I have a question about the PID controller. Right. Okay, I'll show my screen. Uh, this is a picture, can you see? Yeah. Yeah, here uh, uh, I think uh, the arrow one equals to the uh, Q one uh, minus Q one uh, Q one uh, uh, this minus Q one X. I think the unit of the arrow one is uh, is m meters. But now this uh, arrow one after PID it will be the force. So sure, exactly because. As the input for your PID is the uh, the position error, yeah. then uh, uh, okay. Let me just let me show you my screen. I just wrote down the something yes, that. Uh, but so I want to ask a question because this is the position. The position. If we want to get the force, we need to uh, do the two times the differential. Here. No, no, yeah, you, no, no. Let me just uh, share my screen. I will uh, answer your question. <clears throat> so, um, uh, you send Q this with a plus and Q act with a minus. Yes. And here you have a error, the error which will equals to the difference between Q desired minus Q actual. Yes. Yes. So uh, here it is the difference between the actual position and the desired one. And then you send it to the PID. Yes. But what is the equation for the PID? that the force equal to uh, 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 the error times proportional coefficient time plus 
time derivative of uh, uh, the year times d component plus uh, integral times i component. So you can think out of it that this really looks like uh, you can think about e like delta q like uh, deflection and you can think like uh, do you remember the equation for a spring so there will be force will be uh, delta q cool times coefficient of stiffness the same for the revolute uh, uh, rotational spring as well it will be the same so this one uh, equals to newtons this one equals to newton per meters and pretty much the same uh, thing happened here so we send here uh, position in your case in meters we put it here and the output of this will be nothing else as newtons so you can think about um, uh, those coefficients as uh, uh, coefficient of stiffness and coefficient of damping so really if we consider that uh, uh, the year we have year in meters and then we have coefficient of stiffness coefficient of stiffness it is newton per meter the result will be newton right the same true for the damping that you, you have uh, time derivative time derivative is a velocity so you have m times s uh, uh, excuse me second like this uh, and it's supposed to be multiplied with the this stuff and also as a result you will get n so this is in newtons it is in newtons and the same for the i components in newtons so the result will be in newtons. Uh, by the way, you can consider uh, looking the the uh, the slides for the second practice task, and there I explained you the concept. Uh, so let me just for briefly show you. So this is the book of Kevin Lynch and if you do consider reading the second chapter you will see that actually your uh, control system looks like this that there is a lot of stuff but uh, in the simulation uh, uh, typically we do uh, we simplify it to this version so we as the input send the desired behavior to the controller and the controller gives us forces and torques that then you send to the robot it's the same thing that you do uh, your PID as the input takes the uh, position error and the output of your PID is the forces and torques that need to be applied to the revolute or prismatic joints did I answer your uh, question yes, sir. Uh, so the PID can uh, not only used in this system can also be used in the system which have the, uh, the original uh, unit and the, to the uh, present unit. The difference between them they have the two times uh, multiply like two times differentials, right? Excuse me, I didn't really get the um, uh, the the answer your answer, but. Once, once again, uh, as the input, you send him position. You can think about as a deflection, like a physical analogy, as the deflection. And uh, then you, in this PID block, what do you do? You multiply your deflection with the coefficient of stiffness, and the result you get forces. And those forces or torques you then send to the to your joints. Uh, those are joints you can think about like those uh, are generated by your motors and uh, it's not just like a signal 
we uh, we don't model we didn't uh, model uh, motors uh, here because we didn't have any time for that uh, but uh, uh, in our models we consider that PID gives us torque which then can be applied for the uh, joints but in real life of course PID just can calculates uh, some signal then then needs to be uh, amplified with your uh, your with your amplifiers and this signal need to be sent as the torque to your DC motor and DC motor then apply the torque but we skip that part all right because uh, yeah. torque is proportional to the current and current is proportional to the signal so we just uh, make it simpler all right uh, all right, sir. I write down uh, equation. All right. Uh, okay. no. Any more questions? Uh, the, I have the question about uh, the meaning of uh, V vector. Um, in the third slide, which uh, Vadim asked about. <sighs> what does it? P means I I R. Uh, can you uh, comment what what did you wrote? Uh, it's about the the power in electrical approach. Is it like I is the current? I think that. What does it P means? Uh, uh, Leo, can you comment what did you wrote? Uh, that is the equation of the power. Power. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like current times uh, uh, times voltage, right? Yes. Yeah. So I think in this situation, I can also use the PID control. Because after two times differentiation, I will get uh, R. Uh, R will be constant. R is constant. If I go to, if I go to change it, what will be happening? Why do you consider this? It's beyond the model that we do, right? Yes, uh, in the former model, we, uh, we get the error of the position, but now if we get the error of the power, I think it will be the same, right, sir? Uh, error of power. Yes. Uh, so basically, you send like uh, uh, current and power to. But why do you need it to do this? I didn't get it. Uh, I just want to a clarification. It's just my imagination. Your imagination, but uh, uh, you because can do you actually can do whatever you want. But uh, what is the physical meaning? I didn't really get because of the, with the, uh, with something that I just explained to you, there is a physical analogy and explanation to all this stuff. My explanation is short. You can read the chapter of, uh, about the control in Kevin Lynch book to get the whole yeah. stuff. But here, uh, it's, uh, you need to give some arguments. Why do you actually you need it? <laughs> you know, because it's not clear for me. Why can you do this? Uh, you know, you can send that power, but just the torque. Uh, and you, I mean, and not torque, but current, and current will be proportional to the torque, so uh, it pretty much the same uh, uh, stuff. So, uh, current equals to coefficient of uh, uh, your robot mechanical constant times uh, torque, or other way around, it's not really matter. So, there is a uh, linear, uh, linear 
relationship between current and torque. So here, current is the output of your PID. R is just some constant. So here is your, it's like you have uh, uh, the output of your current PID uh, in power two. So it's not really make sense. 